Welcome back to Retro Wolf 88. Today we're going to take a look at the PS3, the backwards compatible version. We're going to be pulling it apart, cleaning the system up. We're going to do new thermal paste on the GPU CPU chipset to help keep it going for as long as possible. We're going to start out by pulling the case apart which is going to consist of pulling out a security screw that is located underneath this piece of rubber. Inside is a Torx security screw. I don't have that one handy right now, and most of the time I don't use it anyway. I have a small flathead screwdriver that gets it done just as easy. Once we have that removed, we're going to go ahead and take the hard drive off of the PS3 and then we're going to pull the top cover off. When removing the hard drive, insert a flathead screwdriver to the front side of it. Pop the cover plate off. Then there's just one blue screw to remove. Once you have the screw removed, all you have to do is pull up the small lever and remove the hard drive. Now that the hard drive is removed, we're going to go ahead and pull the front or top cover plate off simply by sliding it and lifting. Now we're going to remove the screws holding the casing together. One good thing about Sony is on each component they will have a screw marked that you need to remove to pull that component out. So if you follow the screws it'll walk you along. Now that we have the screws removed from the casing, we're going to pull those out and go ahead and separate the shell top from the shell bottom. Once all of the screws are removed, we're going to pop the top off. There's going to be a little bit of noise. Just be careful while you're doing it and try not to force too hard. Now that we've got the case removed, we're going to go ahead and start removing the internal components to get us down to the heat sink of the GPU CPU chipset. To remove the Blu-ray disc drive, all you have to do is lift it up. It's not screwed down to the board. There's a single connector. And then there's a ribbon cable that actually connects underneath the board a little lever to pull up and push down to lock in place. Again here we have another small ribbon cable. Not as small as the Joy-Con. Lift up the lever and remove. While you're pulling this apart try to keep note of every little ribbon cable you remove one thing that I like to do is as I pull a screw out and I remove a component, I'll put the screw back into its hole and set it to the side so I don't lose any later. We're going to continue pulling each component off individually, making sure that we take note of where the screws are on the plates so we know where to put them back once we get them off. I'm not going to name every component. As long as you watch the video, we should be able to go over everything you need to remove them. Once we get here, we'll notice that there is a clip. Press down and pull back. We should be able to remove that plug. And 
another component down. Let's keep going. So now we're getting ready to go ahead and remove the screws that take the main board off, the motherboard. Before we do that, there is this one here. I believe it's a ground cable. We need to remove it and then just remove the screws from the outer edges. And the whole board will pull up. You're gonna have to finagle it a little bit. Sometimes there's even a popping sound. Don't be scared of it. We're also gonna pull out these little pressure plates that hold the heat sink to the GPU CPU chipset. So now that we've got the case off, we're left with the board itself. We're gonna keep pulling stuff off of it. Remember, for every component on a Sony, there should be a screw where it's pointed to. If it was referred by GameStop, probably not. separates from the metal plate holding it in. Just be real gentle when you're going around the edges pulling it apart. Again, you don't want to force anything or put too much pressure on any component. So now that we've gotten everything apart, I am going to take some time, clean up the board, probably go ahead and clean all the different components that go to it, and then we'll talk more about replacing the thermal gel. I do have rubbing alcohol that I spray on the boards, and then I'll give them a brush. Now that we've got the main board cleaned up, we're going to move on to the thermal paste. You can see the chips here. So what we want to do is completely clean off any residue off of these chips. We also want to remove all of the thermal paste that you see connected to the heat sinks here. We're going to also clean that up as well and then get it all put back together.
Okay, now that we've got most everything cleaned up, we're going to start reassembling the PlayStation 3. We're going to start by putting the shell casing back onto the upper half. Once we have that put on, we're going to move on to putting our thermal gel in place. To apply our thermal gel, which you can get off the internet, we're going with Grizzly because it's really good. All you do is find your GPU, CPU, and you're going to put a pea-sized portion in the center. There's no point in putting extra, because if it runs out over the sides, it's not going to do any good anyway. Now that we have the thermal gel put on, we're going to place the heat sink back onto the board, plugging in the fan as we go. Now we can reassemble the other side of the board. Now we got both plates back on, we're going to put the pressure pads for the heat sinks back in place. And now we're going to start putting some of our components back onto the main board. But first I think I'm going to drop it back into the bottom part of the case. Now we're going to reconnect the ground cable to the board and start placing all of our components back onto it. So we've about got all of our components put back together. I was going to mention real quick that we were missing a couple of screws. It's not a big deal or the end of the world. It probably has more than it needs anyway. So we're going to put the last few components back together, clean up the case, and this one will be all done. Okay, we're going to get the last few pieces put back together and get the case reassembled.
With everything snapped back into place, we're going to reinstall the hard drive. Put the blue screw back in. It's cover plate. And then the security screw goes back into place. Well, there you have it. A breakdown and thermal paste replacement on a PlayStation 3 Model 1. If you have any questions or comments, put them down into the comment section below. Thanks for watching Retro Wolf 88. Make sure to like, click, and subscribe.